Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you how you can create this pulsing button. As we can see here, it's a normal button in Elementor. I just added some CSS. So I just wanted to go over with you what you need to add here and how you can stylize it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So we'll start with a blank page. As we can see here, I just created a new page and then I just enabled the Elementor canvas over here in the settings at the bottom left hand corner. And as we can see here, page layout Elementor canvas. Now, if I'll head over to my elements, I just want to head over and drag a button element just drag and drop it wherever you want to. And I'll just style it a little bit. I'll head over to my style and I just define the text color as white and then the background color set to black. Now, I'll also define the typography head over there and then under the font family, I will just define it as assistant and then 24 pixels. Now I also want to add a border radius to my button as 12 pixels. And then I want to head over to my advanced tab over here. And then I'll scroll to the bottom and then I'll head over to my custom CSS. So far, so good. As we can see here, we have our button, but we want to add our pulsing effect behind our button. For this, I have a custom code that I've already prepared. And if you want to, it will be down in the description of this video, whether it's a link or just the code itself. I want to open up my notepad. And as we can see here, we have our code over here. We have our pulsing button and we have some style for this button and we have our before and our keyframes. I will go over with you on each and every thing over here, but just bear with me. But it will all come together in a few minutes. I want to head over and just copy the first section over here and then just paste it over here. Now, it doesn't does much, but we have a few things are setting up over here. Now, the pulse button is our button class, as we can see here. So you would want to copy it and then head over to your layout and then just head over to CSS classes and just paste it over here. Now we can see here that we have a box shadow over here. It doesn't do as much as we can see here because it's on a before. A before is just a pseudo class. And if you're not familiar with pseudo classes, I'll be doing a video on my channel very soon about that. And if you're watching this in the future, it's already on my channel and it will be popping up right now on your screen. This is a pseudo class. Usually it's something that adds up to the markup and you can play with it. As we can see here, the content, then the position is set to absolute absolute and top zero left zero width of 100% and then height of 100%. In a few minutes, we'll be able to see here that it will block if I will try to put a link on top of this button and I'll show you how to enable the link again, but it will be in a few minutes. Now, again, we have our box shadow, but for this animation to happen, we need to add our keyframes as if you're familiar with editing videos, the same thing here, we have keyframes. So I'll head over to my notepad and I would just want to copy these keyframes as we can see here. And then then just paste it right below. Now we can see here that my animation already started. Now let me explain a few things here. So we have our box shadow. Okay, that's fine. It's already defined here and we can see the values over here. We can see here we have animation. We have pulse fade. This is the name of the animation. What time or how much time it will take. It will take two seconds as we can see one two and then it ends up and it's infinite and meaning it goes in a loop now the keyframes would define how it will act meaning we have zero percent we'll have a box shadow of this value and we'll have the one so meaning we have your rgba so the value would be black completely black now as we can see here our 70 percent would also be box shadow but this time we have a new value over here of 10 pixels meaning it will spread of 10 pixels and then we have the value of rgba zero 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 meaning it's black the first three over here are set to black and if you're not familiar with rgba there are a ton of tools over in the internet where you can just transform your hex color to rgb or rgba or hsl or other values of a color one example of these tools is right over here as we can see here we have rgba color picker.com hex to rgba and we can see here rgba to hex and we have more tools as we can see here now we can put our hex color over here and it will transform it to rgb or rgb GBA, and then we can play around with it. If I go back over here again, it will set to black and then it will be totally transparent, but this will set to 70%. Now the 10% would be also box shadow, but this time it will be 50 pixels as we can see here. Now this would show the pulsing behind our button. And if you're not sure how to work with box shadow, there is a great doc here on the MDN website. As you can see here, we have box shadow and I would really encourage you to go over there. And I sometimes even myself, even with my 
my own experience, I go over in the dock and there is nothing to be ashamed of if you go over there and try to figure it out or try to refresh your memory about that. Because all of us, we sometimes we are not sure how to do things and we want to check it as we can see here. And it will tell you in a glance how to work with it even better and it will only refresh your memory. So I think that's a good resource. Back to our website, as we can see here. So this is our animation. Now, what I wanted to show you here is let's say I want to make my button clickable. There's one problem that I've encountered when I'm pasting this code, which I hope will not be encountering it. But if you do, I just wanted to let you know how to overcome it. One of the things here is if I want to make this button clickable, that's pretty much what you want to do, right? With a button, you will typically head over to your content and over here, you want to paste your link. For my example, we'll go with something very, very simple. Let's say google.com just for the sake of this example i head over back to my advanced and i'll head over and open up my custom css now i'll just click update i'll just head over to my preview page over here as we can see here when i hover the button i can click it nothing the only thing that is clickable or the only thing that can be marked is the text now we don't want that we want our button to be clickable one of the options that you can do if i'll go back to my edit page and i'll head over to my pulse button right over here on the top i want to add my z index and set a value higher than I'm going to be setting to my before. So let's head over with the value of five and then close attribute over here. And then I'll want to scroll over here and then also put Z index of, let's say, for example, two, and then also close it, then hit update and then head over back. And then we'll be able to see that it's still not clickable. So what you want to do is set the event of the button, because right now, if I'll open up my dev tool, if I'll click right click on my mouse and then I'll hit inspect, we'll be able to see here that my before over here is overlapping my button. So I want to set it back over there. So what I want to do is head over back to my edit page over here and then over in the pulse button and before just beneath the Z index, you want to put the following value pointer events and then set it to none and then just close it and then hit update and then when we'll head over back to our preview page we'll be able to see that now we can hover our button and then it will be clickable and we'll be able to see that even though the before is still on top of our button it will not catch the event over here of clicking and yeah that's pretty much what i wanted to show you and i really hope this video and if it did i'd be really glad to if you leave a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any tutorial that i post on element or WooCommerce or WordPress. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.